21 on left. Rings of power? That's, oh, it's back? <sighs> All right, well, I guess we can watch an episode of that. There's three? Oh, brother. Well, friends, the long, long wait is over. It's back. Rings of Power season two. As you know, Rings of Power is a prequel for The Lord of the Rings, but you know what every good prequel needs? A prequel of its own. So episode one, we start off with a little mini prequel. We open on D23. The D in this case stands for dark side. Morgoth is stepping down and Sauron, who no longer looks like Discount Yaskier and now is giving Simon Pegg, is uh, giving the team a little pep talk to get them hyped for the new change in management. He's got some big plans for expansion, some brand new tech that's never been seen before. You might say it's unseen. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. So they aren't actually that hyped. In fact, they're really not into it at all. But the master manipulator Sauron knows exactly how to get them back on his side. Don't like it? Tough. Literally everyone else hates you. You're stuck with me. Very charisma, much riz. Then Adar, who no longer looks like Data, but is now giving emo Sean Bean, picks up the extremely pointy crown and starts talking in orcish about Sauron being the new Dark Lord. Did they even understand the speech that Sauron was giving, which was not in orcish? Evil Ned flips the crown and uses it to stab Shauna the orcs. Everyone is pretty on board with this. Literally everyone goes wild, stabbing him like crazy. But even after all of that, his face is remarkably intact. But then he goes full Elsa and explodes into ice and snow. And while the orcs cheer for Evil Ned, we pan over to Sauron who is drip dripping his way on out of there. It's giving defrosting my evil fridge. Then Sauron enters his Venom era. Hitches a ride on a cart, eats the lady who's driving it for a snack. He does let the horse go, which is either very kind or very stupid. And gets a new old face. Sauron enters his Time Lord era. Next, Sauron meets with the kindly exposition peasant. You see, he and the other peasants are on the run from the orc. But he's good enough to stop and have a chat with Sauron. Happily provides information about the super visible crest that he's wearing. Isn't it at all curious why some dude walking around alone towards danger is not interested at all in safety, but is is extremely interested in this crest that he's wearing. Completely natural thing to occur, zero suspicion. And on the basis of knowing literally nothing about him, he invites Sauron to join their merry band of refugees. And Sauron's like, yup, yo ho, yo ho, a peasant's life for me. Peasant notices Sauron staring off into the middle distance and from this he intuits that he was having a nightmare. Sauron, ever the sly, manipulative and cunning one. Yeah, I was having a nightmare cause I've done evil stuff. Everyone has been naughty now and again. No, I'm like for real bad news. Nah, you're alive because you chose good. Um, citation needed? Then a beastie attacks the ship. Peasant dude gets hit immediately and Sauron is like, yoink, I'll be having that nice crest. And we're all caught up. This is where Galadriel cross paths with Sauron. I totally see now why it was necessary to go back to before the raft meeting to, to understand how we got to that point. Everything is so much clearer now. Now we're back to the present and Galadriel and Elrond are riding like their lives depend on it. See, Elrond was riding off to tattle on Galadriel to Papa Elf. Is this true? Have you been a bad girl? Okay, fine. Yes, I did kinda sorta make friends with Sarah. Papa Elf needs a minute to digest this, giving Elrond and Galadriel time to start bickering. Exactly the sort of reaction you'd expect after this kind of earth shattering revelation. Now children, kindly cut it out and give me those rings of plastic. But, but, but they're evil. Have you forgotten about the tree plague that somehow also means elves are dying? And now you're telling me somehow Palpatine returned. I mean, I mean, uh, Sauron returned. Sorry kids, this is serious. Give me your toys. This is grown up business. No, do what dad says. You would say that. <laughs> Elrond refuses to give up the rings. So naturally, since they are standing right next to a waterfall, he throws them and himself over the edge. Meanwhile, in Mordor, the Southlands folk are not enjoying being under new management. Sauron shows up, but you know, as king of the Southlands, if you, in case you forgot, that's what they all think he is. Let my people go. Uh, no. Well, you see that elf supremacist that tortured you? She has a new friend who's making new fun toys for her. Cool story, don't care. Sauron couldn't be 
alive, could he? No chance. Meanwhile, Great Value Gandalf is trekking through the desert with his not hobbit, talking about his bad dreams, but the sand people are watching them. Uh-oh, they are starving and lost and thirsty. And Nori is like, hey, why don't you magic us up some food and water? How about it? Okay, fine. I guess I can give it a go. The tree explodes and out come all the bugs and Nori is delighted. Mmm, yummy cockroaches. As I sit down to eat this feast, uh, Great Value Gandalf starts sharing about his dream, but just when he's about to get to the interesting part, he's like, no, better not talk about this. Uh, he complains about the feeling, like when he's swallowing the cockroaches, the feeling of the legs in his throat. That's the best part! They're dancing! And just like that, I am reminded how horrifying the Harfoots are. Thinking about eating dancing cockroaches makes her homesick. Great Value Gandalf says he's homesick too. But you don't remember your home. Yeah. Cool. Meanwhile, in Mordor, this big beastie is threatening Sauron. New management comes in to do the regularly scheduled torturing. They're nice enough to leave some meat behind, which then Sauron can use to lure over the beastie and uh, show off whatever the wolf version of parcel tongue is. So that's very cool. Meanwhile, in Linden, Elrond has decided to visit the shipbuilding elves so he can get some advice from Grandpa Elf, who very organically tells one of his staff that perfection only exists in Valinor. Meanwhile, Papa Elf is sending word to Celebrimbor about the whole you know, don't trust Halbrand thing. Thanks, Dad, for trusting me. Trust? Trust? This whole dang mess is half your fault! I just want you to know I'm, like, super committed. Uh-huh. They still can't find Elrond, but not to fear, Galadriel's had a look at the script, and she knows exactly what he is doing and what he is planning to do. Meanwhile, Elrond is showing the rings of plastic to Grandpa Elf. See, here's the plan. There's this super deep, dark hole in the ground. What you want to do is take these rings and- Uh-oh, the squad is here. Dang Galadriel and her snooping. Pal, can you just trust me? The rings are fine. Okay, and are you fine? What? You were headed for elf heaven, but then turned around and came home with the main evil dude. That's pretty sus. Listen, I went with my gut. Hang on. Where's Grandpa Elf? Grandpa Elf is sailing away, presumably to that deep dark hole he mentioned. Meanwhile, old Ben Kenobi is getting ready to ambush the sand people. But instead they catch Samantha Wise. You see, her Miss Frodo is not going on some adventure without her. And luckily Samantha Wise is a better navigator, so off they try. It is a very bright night, it must be said. The stars are shining so brightly that they all have to squint. Meanwhile, in Linden, Grandpa Elf has decided that this is far enough. Why go all the way to the big deep dark hole when you could just drop the rings anywhere in the water. But then he gets a good look at them and is like, whoa. Meanwhile in Mordor, Evil Ned is doing his good cop routine. Listen man, I hear ya. Sauron is the worst, but he's back. Let me go back to the elves, they like me, and I'll get the intel you need so you can go fight him. Evil Ned is down, but only after a bit of groveling. But in case you were wondering, Sauron is up to something. He does set the beastie free before leaving, which um seems to kill like one guy. So very epic evil plan successful. Meanwhile in Linden, the elves have gathered to hear Pop Elf sing at them about how winter is coming. Well fam, the time has come to peace out. We're headed back to the good place. Oh, but what's this? Grandpa Elf? And he's got an update on the status of perfection? It turns out Middle Earth now has perfection in it because these rings of plastic they are it. Grandpa's already wearing one. But as he's handing the other two to Papa Elf, who is already wearing like so many rings. No! And they're so startled that they drop them. And then the silver one makes its way Snyder style all the way over to Galadriel. Papa Elf was one on two, but it kind of gets lost in the jumble with all of his other rings. And as soon as they put the rings on, the trees are totes fine again, just like that. Wow, almost like magic. Well, don't you feel stupid now, Elrond. Meanwhile, in a region, Celebrimbor is setting up shop, getting ready to make loads more rings of plastic, when who should knock on his door but his old pal, Halbrand. Dun, dun, dun. So to recap, we learned how it is that Sauron ended up on that raft, which again, super important details. So glad we learned that. We learned that Elrond is not cool with the evil ring. I mean, the fine, good rings that fix the trees. Um, and perfection previously only existed in Valinor. And... Um, and Sauron is doing deals with Adar, and yeah, that's where we're at. Can't wait to see what the next episode will bring.